Gotta pray we fall asleep, you might not make it tomorrow Pain on my shoulders and my heart full of sorrow Trying to live right, only me and God know Trying to live right, only me and God know Where I'm from, they only care about them commas They a killer nigga, kill a nigga in front of his mama They don't pray on you, they don't pray up to Allah Only thing they think about <laughs> Buddy, what's the deal, bro? What's going on, fam? Man, nothing chillin', been having a great day so far So, buddy, Mr. B, you don't doubt you, man For How sure. did you come up with that name in the world of Lil's and Young's, you know what I'm saying? I see you actually put some thought behind. Yeah, well, Buddy came from, like, a childhood family nickname. And, like, I couldn't really get away from it if I wanted to. So, like, I just had to think of, like, some creative meaning that it mm -hmm. meant to me. Like, so once I figured that out, I was like, yeah, that, that's dope. And, like I said, as far as me using it for my rap name, it was a lot of doubt with me at first, like, as far as putting my music out to people or, like, what they gonna think. I don't want to be judged for real, like, mm -hmm. but after a while, I was like, bro, I can't doubt my talent. Like, I just got to put it out, so I want to encourage other people to, like, be you, don't doubt you. Wow. Bro, that's powerful, bro. You saying something like that, that that's the reason why you chose that name. I mean, when I was just in the studio with you, yeah. what was it, Tuesday? Yeah. <sighs> bro, that doubt that you was talking about that was there at first, like... I didn't see it. I couldn't tell. I mean, the way that you were in there meticulously, you went and used your time, paid attention to detail, and came out with a cold song. I mean, man, how yeah. long you been doing this for so far? Man, I've been, like, since I've been back in Detroit, I've been making music. Well, that's been, like, six years. Mm -hmm. But, like, just to the point now where I'm, like, putting it out to people, i only been doing that for, like, this is my second year. Wow. So you said since you've been back to Detroit. So um, for the people, I guess, just in case they don't know. Right. You were from Detroit originally. Yeah, I was born in Detroit. Detroit. And yep, I was born in Detroit. That. Moved to Atlanta when I was like eight years old. It was down there all the way up until 20. So tell me about that. How was that move? Like, was it a big culture shock from the way that we do things up here versus down there? What was that like at first? Yeah, it was definitely a culture shock. Like, you got to understand, like, that's the home of Southern hospitality. And here it's more like you got to be on your P's and Q's because you don't really know who's going to do what. Like, at any <laughs> moment, true. somebody can pop off. Yeah, watch like, that rear view and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even as far as like you just walk in the store, like what up up here? It's like what up can mean like what up you trying to fight? Or, like, yeah, whatever, like, what up? But down there, it's like <laughs> it, it feel weird to go in somewhere and not speak. You know what I'm saying? Like hey, how y'all doing or whatever. Bro, I definitely experienced that myself when I went to like uh, Florida, for example, yeah. or even like Alabama and things like that. Like they was calling me honey and baby. You feel <laughs> me? I ain't even know the ladies. So. Right. It, it was really cool to experience that southern hospitality and people that actually uh, care about your general well-being. Right. So when you moved back up here to Detroit, mm -hmm. what was that like? Was it a that was culture, even, another culture man, shock? That was even more of a culture shock because at that point, like like I said, I'm 20 at that point, and like the way that we do stuff in Atlanta is totally different. How we dress, how we talk, it's totally different at the time. Like now, everybody is kind of caught up. Or it's almost like the same. Everybody wearing skinny jeans and that type of stuff now. But, excuse me, sit five, six years ago, nah. So like, tell me about that. You said it was a, the way that they do things down there was different yeah. versus up here. What was a few of those things that was like, Man. whoa, like hold I on, y'all like, getting down like this? <laughs> first, the skinny jean thing. Then up here, it's like, you got to kind of be uniform. Like, if you ain't got the kit, the buffs and the whatever, the designer jeans. Or right, like at that, that moment, time, rather like, you kind of out of the loop. <laughs> And then, like, far as the music scene, at the time, the music scene up here was all divided. Like, I think at the time, it was Doughboy Cash Out. Mm -hmm. And then Team you had Eastside. Team Eastside. It was yep. real divided. In Atlanta, if you coming up at the same time somebody else coming up, most likely y'all going to end up working together. Bro, I noticed that a lot about Atlanta artists. Like, yeah. everybody know each other or know of each other, have worked together in some way, form, shape, or fashion. And right. everybody tend to elevate each other to the point where... Atlanta is where it is right now because it seems like when the tide rises, it rises all ships. And right. I feel like that's the attitude that we're more so adopted now in our culture and music here in Detroit. We're seeing, you know, Sada Baby, T Grizzly, mm -hmm. Payroll, um, Peasy continue to do things. I swear, Vezo seems like all Big Sean right. seems like all of the the ships are rising at this point. What yeah. What do you think has been able to help um, Detroit music do that? I, I think, like, with the whole music industry, I think they kind of took that from Atlanta. Like, because for a while, it was just Atlanta artists keep popping up and keep popping up and keep popping up. And eventually, they start asking questions, like, how are y'all keeping this going? They would ask Atlanta artists that in, in interviews. So then after a while, everybody see, like, you can make 
way more noise if you let everybody get a chance to shine. It ain't really like, and then like also in Detroit, like it seemed like out of nowhere, everybody just started making music and just like not being scared to show the culture of Detroit. And that just, everybody started gravitating to it. Like, cause really this is the home for music for real. Yeah. yeah. Big Rudy, Motown, you yeah. know? Yeah, that's true, bro. So what has been your inspiration behind making music? Like, uh, what what made you want to be like, all right, like, this is what I want to do. I'm about to go in the booth and lay down a track. To be real, like, at first, I didn't even look at it like that. Like, I wasn't inspired to go in there. I'm like, bro, I don't want to be no rapper. Like, everybody want to be a rapper. But once I got in there and, like, found out, like, how I sound and more so just found out that this was kind of, like, therapeutic for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I was I was able to tell my story. I ain't big on, like, Showing, showing emotion or expression. Busy man. <laughs> yeah, no, that's my pops, man. And my, my pops used to make music, too. So. Shout out to pops. Yeah, yeah, shout out to my pops. But, like, more so, this was, like, therapeutic for me because, like, I ain't a big person to just sit around and be like, this is how I feel. Like, that ain't me. So then a lot of times you get the misconception of a person that you're around all the time or people that you're around not really knowing how you feel. Mm -hmm. I could put all that in my music. Like, you could tell from tones and content, like, how I feel or where I'm at in my life. Wow, so you would say like your music is a way of transferring energy. Let's say you may be mad or mm -hmm. feel some type of way about something. You get that out through your music. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome, bro. Definitely. Dang, so um, I, I guess saying what, like growing up, what was your upbringing like? Like who was positive influences in your life that made you want to actually be something and do something? Well, like for me, like I grew up in the, once we left from up here and moved down south, we grew up in like a church. Mm -hmm. Like my mom was a pastor My stepdad a pastor Like all the male influences in my life Came from church at that point mm -hmm. And like I mean it'd be You know the regular people in the neighborhood Gang members whatever And I was cool with all of them too But like the main people that were like Trying to get me to see that like Bro there's more stuff out here for you Like giving me books and magazines And right. taking me places to like Upscale restaurants and stuff Even putting me in a uh, I forgot what it's called But it's like where they teach you Manners and Salad for yeah, like etiquette, all etiquette class. Yeah, like they yeah. put me in an etiquette class, so like all that ended up paying off later on. So it, like it was just more so just the people that my mom surrounded us with, like the family that we built that wasn't really family. Mm -hmm. So like yeah, that that's who really gave me the like backbone to be like yeah, bro, there's more out here. Like I don't have to be like everybody else. Exactly, bro. I feel like that's very important that it was people that actually cared enough to take time out of their day in life yeah. to instill that positivity in you. Right. You know what I'm saying because the same people done positive things in my life as far as hey say hey Lamont you could do this that and the third or hey Tank if you do this you can be able to do you can be able to get that right. and with that being said it was those encouraging people in my life that continue to make me want to go further because it's like hey I'm I am better than that I, I can do more right so I would say um, as far as like um, with your music and everything what's your vibe What's your message that you want to get across? Well, I I try to, like, not so much switch up my main message, which is just to inspire people to do, like, whatever it is that you want to do, as long as you work at it, you're going to be able to get it done. I feel like it's nothing that you can't do if you're not dedicated to it. But, like, as far as, like, song structures and all that stuff, like, I try to switch that up in my content and, like, what I'm rapping about. Just because, like, like, like you said, like, the other night we was in the studio, you can feel my music. It's not like such a, uh, oh, he just beat hard. Like, no, you can feel it. Like, the my words and the way I say it and stuff. You're give intentional. It yeah. 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 So, like, that. that's my main thing, though. Like, so, like I said, as far as the, my messaging that I'm getting across, it depends on the song. Like, for uh, a big portion of this project, it's going to be turned up. But it's almost like when you hear a future song. Nobody really paid attention to, like, future feelings is really hurt. But like you turned that up, future Hendrix, yeah, yeah, like you turned up, just beat hard, you popping, y'all in the club rapping this. But if you really listen to what he's saying, there's some pain in there. Hey, yeah, that's where the best artistry and yeah. comes from, bro. Like, what what would you say to that young 15, 16 year old, or anybody out there that they have things that they go through and they want to be able to get these things out through their artistry, through making right. music or anything? What what would you say to that person to help them to get that out? I would tell them like. At the at the peak of whatever is going on, like the worst moment in your life at that moment, record. Or if it's basketball is your thing, go dribble. Like that's when you work on your craft the most. Cause it's like 
you can take all that energy, all that hurt, all that pain, and put it into something else. Like I ain't gonna like. Of course, you got to go back home, bro. When that's you, a big thing. I just want to go back on that. So you said when you feeling some type of way, yeah, like or when you in pain, you said go record. Yes, like when it's the worst. Like for example, I'm gonna use myself for example. Uh, and I'll tell you the whole little story. My birthday is August eighth. I found out my granddad that I was living with had uh, cancer, like yeah, wow. lung cancer. Man. The day before my birthday. Yeah, my, my mom's had cancer too, bro. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. But, like, as soon, soon as I found out, I start recording my project that I'm working right on Right then now. and there. So, like, that's why I say, like, a lot of this, you can feel the pain in it. You can, because although, like, the songs aren't, like, directly about him, mm-hmm. you can still feel, like, where I was at mm-hmm. when, when I was making the music. Mm-hmm. So, like, that that's what I mean. That's, like, even all the way in the sports. Michael Jordan won his best games when he had the flu. That's true. Like, so at that moment where you feel like this is the worst possible moment to do something, no, nah, go ahead. Like, that's when you put your foot on the that's gas. That's when you push through. Yeah. Wow. Bro, that's a uh, golden nugget right there. <laughs> Everybody needs to be paying attention to that. Pay attention to that. Write that down. When it gets worse, that's when you got to keep on pushing. Yeah. That's when your best work come out. For sure. Even though it's going to be hard at that time. For sure. Wow. Good words from Buddy. All right. Mr. B, you don't doubt you. So uh, tell me the... The difference between that like uh detroit mindset and, and and georgia mindset what were the people more like down there as far as like up here and as far as like uh people that you associate with on the daily and stuff well i mean down there it was more which i still i'm associated with the same people i got the same friends that i had since like the fifth grade so like they ain't really changed too much but it's more so like a you can do it like anything that you want to do all my friends or family down there is like what you waiting on? Or, like, how can we help you get to that? Right. Whereas, like, up here, when I first came up here, I ain't going to say that that's what it is now. Like we said, people evolve. So, like, at first it was more so, like... And people got to know you. People at least yeah. don't give you that love unless they know yeah. you. You feel nah, me? It's more, it was more so, like, crabs in the bucket up here. Mm-hmm. Like, anything that you were doing that was, like, out of the ordinary or something that you was going for, if they felt like they could do it, they don't want to see you do it first. Right. Or they don't want to see you make it. So then they just, like they just either try to tag along and weigh you down mm-hmm. or they try to like I don't know sabotage it in some type of way. Bro, so through these journeys and you experiencing those different type of people yeah. coming to a different type of environment, I know um through your success that you've been having there may be some type of like failure and setbacks. How have you profited or learned from those failures and setbacks and been able to um pro up and make a good situation out of those things? Man, like I said, that those worst possible moments in my life that's when I found out that I can do something better. Like, I, I learned how to transfer that energy into something else. Because mm-hmm. like, it, it would be easy for me to just fall into a rut, fall into a slump, and just be like everybody else around. Like, yeah, you know like most people. Yeah. yeah, like, you know, everybody got the relatives or the people that you see that's around your family that's, like, not doing nothing, but they got all this potential and talent, mm-hmm. like, wasted talent for real. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I can't be that. Like, I got people I gotta looking at me. I got to do something with mine. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I, and I already know, like, I've always, the movies that I like, the athletes that I like, the musicians that I like, always got a comeback story. Mm-hmm. So I'll be thinking like, uh, this is going to make my story even harder. Like, I'm never looking at it like, oh, this is, this is fucked up. Like, mm-hmm. no, nah, I'm just looking at it like, when I tell this story later on and they see where I'm at now, it's wow. just going to make it 10 times more inspiring. Man, that's very significant, man. For, sure. For real. So tell us about uh, your first project, Runt, and what it was like going through making that and um, what it was like actually putting a project out for the first time. Yeah, so like, Runt, that that's, that tape still hold like a special spot for me because like, again, this was a, at that moment, it was probably like the worst moment of my life. Like I had just got in trouble for something and probably just got put on probation for three years. Oh man. So like, I'm at this point where like, damn, I don't know what else to do. Fuck it, I'll make music. And while I'm making the music, I'm never attending for nobody to hear this stuff. Mm-hmm. But, like, the music I was making was ill to me. Like, mm-hmm. I thought it was the dopest music that I could make. Uh, eventually, I started playing it for, like, uh, the girl I was with at the time. And I, I played it for her. She wanted her friends to hear it. Mm-hmm. So, like, we had, like, a whole little listening session at her house. And all her friends like, yeah, you need to put that out. I want that on my phone. Like, they was vibing to they it? They vibing to it. What? So, like, males and females. They just was like, bro, this is hard. Like, mm-hmm. this you? Like, they couldn't believe it. So then... After a while, you know, I sent a couple songs home to my friends. They all saying the same thing. I'm like, forget it. Let me just figure out how to put this out. 
Like, but I knew I didn't want to go about it like putting it out on um, SoundCloud or nothing like that. Like, I really wanted to get it to the masses. Mm -hmm. Cause, like, I really be thinking like legacy for real, like uh, catalog. Like, when you look back and you see Runt ten years from now, mm -hmm. I want you to see where where that tape was at, how it looked, how it sound, and then where I'm at then. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I be thinking. Like, man, he done really came up. Like, when Jeezy did um, Trap or Die, then right. Thug Motivation, one-on-one, right. 102. By one-on-three, he was on a whole, whole different level. level. Yeah. I feel you, man. So that that want me to, uh, that that leads me, and uh, it wants me to ask you about It's On The Flow. Yeah. So, like, last, uh, in July 4th, I put out um, It's On The Flow. And, like, the reception from that wasn't, like, none of my other stuff that I had put out. Mm -hmm. It was more like, you can hear in, in my voice, you can hear in the flow, you can hear in everything that like I was more confident with what I was making. Mm -hmm. On the flow, how many tracks is that? Uh, that first one, I believe I had like 10 tracks on it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a deluxe as well, Yeah, right? I put out a deluxe. I think I added like four or five more songs. That's mm -hmm. just because I had gotten a groove of just recording. All right. So like, when I put that out though, like I even put like uh, one of my cousins on there that like he don't rap or nothing, but like, I was just having so much fun. I wanted to show him, like, bro, you can do this. Exactly. Which, like I said, he's my older cousin, but I, I feel like I can influence him and show him, like, bro, it's other ways to, like, go about stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? He'd be in some of the same similar situations I've been in. So, like, I'd be like, yeah, bro, just come make some music. Like, try to stay away from that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, like, me being able to take him with me to the photo shoots, take him with me to the studio, and, like, let him get in there and record, I think it opened up a whole nother... Like, his mind has been open ever since then. Like, bro, I want to make music. Like, Bro, that's so dope that you did that because I feel like, just like we was talking about earlier, bro, people taking out their time and day, and it's probably because people did it with you. Right. People talking out their time and day to care about you to be like, bro, it's another way. Or you can make money doing stocks or, bro, you can right. record and actually do something productive. Like, that's really a phenomenal thing, and that's something that I encourage everybody to do like if everybody in this world right now for everybody in america what well, we got three 300 million people mm -hmm. if we all did something positive for somebody else just one thing yeah per day imagine <laughs> imagine how much forward we will go in this world mm. that's big <laughs> all right so let's get back to it's on the flow yeah so the reason for it's on the flow what, what does that even mean bro like, all right, so since I came up here to Detroit, I've been learning all this cool-ass lingo that, like, a lot of people use, and it's been being used for I don't know how long, but it was cool to me because it was new. So, like, eventually this just became my thing. Like, I'll be going to relatives' house. They're like, uh, bro, what you about to do? I'm like, I don't know, but you know it's on the flow with me. Like, I'm about to, so that basically just means, like, it's turnt, it's lit. We about to, I'm about to do something. I'm always doing something. Right, it's whatever. Yeah, it's whatever. Like, I'm that's dead. what, I, it's, it's on the flow. Mm -hmm. So, like, once I started saying it more and more, I'm like, yo, that's kind of catchy. Like, so I turned that into, like, my title for my project. And then on this one, it's on the flow, too, is because, like, every artist that I love or like, they got a series of mixtapes. Mm -hmm. And it's always usually, like, I don't know if they know it, but it's like the series is right before they take off. That's true. Like, if you go back to the Carter... And that's, that was his albums, but then you also got Sorry for the Wait One, Sorry for the Wait and Two. And the droughts, the droughts, droughts, bro. Like, yeah. You got Big Sean Finally Famous. Like, one, two, and three, You know what I'm yeah. saying? You got all of these artists that had these build-up moments. Mm -hmm. Even Lil Baby, I think it was called Harder. Um, yeah, think, Hard, then Harder. harder yeah. yeah, that's true. So, like, they all got these build-up moments, and then, like, you can always hear the change in their voices when you can hear more hun hunger. Then you can also hear when they hit that pivotal, like, they had... They didn't found their flow, and I just kind of feel like that's where I'm at. Like I'm I'm building up right now, bro. So what was your first time like making music? What was Man. that experience like? The first time, I ain't gonna lie, it was it was. Well, now I think about it, this shit was cool, cause it wasn't really me making music like in the studio. Like you mm -hmm. remember the uh, Apple had this app. It was T Pain app. Yeah. So like I'm in college and like. All my friends go home for some holiday. Whatever the holiday was, I wasn't going home. So I stayed at school while everybody else was gone. And I literally recorded a whole mixtape on this T-Pain app just because I was bored. What? And, like, when I got my, like, because my friend had an extra phone. So when I gave him back his phone, I go to their dorm room. They are blasting this shit like it's the new cheesy or some shit. Like, so that was my first experience just making any type of music. My so first... you recorded on the app, on the phone, and oh, then... Yeah. 
somehow it, it linked. It got to somebody no, else like, and they were just blasting. Like they had an phone. extra phone. Like, mm-hmm. my friend had an extra phone. We would play around with the T-Pain app. Like, like they would just do it in their rooms. Like, just play around with it. And like I said, they but went you home. Was, you was, like, actually making something. Yeah, like, like, they went home and I'm bored. So, like, I actually was making songs off this T-Pain app. Like, That's crazy. Just in my, I got this phone, a little extra phone, had it in my room, just making shit on there. And once I gave it back to them, I guess they went through, like, the songs that was on there. Mm-hmm. When I came up there to their dorm room, like, they just blasting this shit. Like, yo, what was you doing? Like... So that was the start of something great right there. Yeah, like that 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 made me have like those like you know you had those group of people that you send all your stuff to. Mm-hmm. Like whatever you doing, you send it to these people because you trust their opinion. They gonna tell you the shit sound yeah, whack. I got people just like that. Yeah, so like that that's what created my little group of people. Mm-hmm. Like I so, send them everything early. So how do you want your music to make people feel? I really want to like provoke every emotion, like. I want you to listen to my tape and cry. I want you to listen to my my tape and be like motivated. Listen to my tape and be thinking. I want you to listen to my tape and fucking laugh for real. Like it's gonna be something on there that like grab your attention and be like, damn, that was funny. Mm-hmm. But like, I want to like provoke every emotion. It's like that's that's what I think of when I think of a good body of work. But it's true. It's like a painting, you know. Like yeah. different people could look at a painting, and even the same person could look at a painting and it make them feel a different way different types different right. different times that they look at it or even different ways that they look at it right wow so in perspective like um as far as like making music um you independent you own everything you own all your masters and stuff right. how important is ownership to you that was very important to me because like as you can see recently a lot of artists have been passing away yeah so like if they don't own their masters and their royalties and shit like what happens to the money that comes from that? And that, and really, I hate to say it, but like when the artist pass away, that's when their music does the best. Yeah. So like, say, God rest the dead, King Von just passed away and he didn't mm-hmm. own his masters. This is when his music is gonna do the best. So then the record company is eating off of all of this. What about his kids? Right, and like, he put you know himself in a position to where his kids would be able to eat yeah. off of that. They gonna be able to eat off that for the rest of his life. Like the rest of their lives, just off the strength that, like, for whatever reason, when an artist passes away, it make them ten times bigger. Like, we gonna go check out their music even more. Like, so then that should just keep coming in. Bro, that is real important being able to do that. Yeah. So for me, like I said, you know, like I said, my kids motivate me. So like, I'm thinking about longevity. Like, I mean, I don't plan on passing away no time soon. But even mm-hmm. if like I get to fucking Barry White age and still making music and shit like I still want my kids to be eating off this I still want right. my whole catalog to be mine I want to own it I don't want to sign my rights over to somebody else they're like y'all only messing with me because these other people follow me mm-hmm. not because like you put in the work like nah I, I want to own my own shit like so if I did sign with anybody it would have to be like a partnership mm-hmm. or we have to work out some type of deal like I need to own my masters for sure but I feel like that's so important because have you ever heard of the theory of uh, the thousand true fans? No. So it's this theory that everybody, whatever you do, rather if you sew, knit, make music, make videos, you got a thousand true fans. Mm-hmm. And out of a, what, seven billion people in this world, there's a thousand people that's going to mess with you and your product and what you have to offer right. is going to pay 10 to to $100 per whatever product you put out. Right. You'll be able to make a living with um, being able to give those thousand true fans value. And of course we want to scale bigger than that, right. but it's like if people just went with that mindset, mindset, like there's a thousand people in this world of seven billion, in this United States of 300 million that I need to give value to, that want to be able to compensate me for the value that I'm giving them. Mm. And bro, that's a big deal to own your masters as an artist because we always gonna have those true fans those right. true people that's gonna rock with us no matter what right and I, I mean i know a lot of people be asking like so how do you turn those followers on instagram to money i think you just explained it that's how it's supposed to be but like you know you got people that you got these are many followers most of them probably spam but the people that got like that actual number of followers usually are the people that's not selling anything <laughs> Which they, cause they don't know, they don't know the power that the social media is really for, or what it's supposed to be used for. But I, I definitely see what you're saying though. Like you feed that core audience of people, like you can survive off that for sure. For real, bro, you can. And you just, you just said something real cool talking about social media, how people don't know how to use it. 
it made me think about how literally we grew up between like the 2000s and 2010. And mm-hmm. I know, I feel like personally, 2000s to 2010 was like one of the best times to be alive. Mm-hmm. Bro, we've seen the development between the worst kind of internet, the worst kind of graphics, now look. the lowest grade technology right. to the highest grade. Yeah. How has uh, the integration of technology in your lifetime helped you to be able to learn more and be more awakened and aware of different situations in life? Yeah, you know, if it wasn't for the internet, like I probably would be hip to a whole bunch of stuff. Like, because if you just go off the environment that you're around, you got to really think about it. Like, our parents was taught by their parents, and their parents was taught by their parents, and not too long ago, their parents were slaves that didn't have too much information. So the information that was passed down to us was, or the lack thereof of information that was passed down to us, if we didn't have the internet, we wouldn't know too much of anything. Mm-hmm. It was really in, in our generation, like you said, that 2000, 2010, like capsule of time, like that showed us like how much we can really do. Mm-hmm. So now that we at the place, like we got YouTube, we can learn anything from YouTube. It's almost like it's our job to go back and teach our parents and grandparents that's still alive. How to use how these to use devices, it. bro. Yeah, or how to even giving them knowledge. Like, they were thinking about survival. Mm-hmm. We thinking about the next generation. Yeah. So, like, it's, we in a whole different ball. Like, we it. giving our grandparents, uncles, and parents uh, history lessons yeah. on what they thought was right. But it's like, no, nah, it says it right here. They like, wow. Right. Like that, But that's what I mean. Like, if you really look at it like that, like... They were living to survive. We living to progress. We like because our say that again. That was dope. Like they were living to survive. We're living to progress. Like that's why you think like uh, I'm sure you've seen like around the time of voting and stuff. They like they happy to see that young people are voting, and uh, we keep saying like we ain't our ancestors. Mm-hmm. Like that's what that shit mean to me. Like because we're literally thinking about the next generation on how to change stuff. Right. They couldn't really change nothing. They were just trying to survive and make it. You know what I'm saying? So like. The internet has taught me like shit from wanting generational wealth, how to go about it, how to even start a business, all that. Imagine we had no internet. Who gonna tell me how to LLC some shit? Like, That's true. <laughs> You're gonna have to go to the library, read Man, a book for that. And hope they let you in the library long <laughs> enough to figure this out. Hope nobody checked this book out. Hope, yeah, like, hope that it's still there. Like, it's too much. Well, really, like, now I can just pick up my phone, Google this shit or YouTube it and not learn how to do it less than like shit, 15, 20 minutes. And then back in the day, you had to go take classes and pay these people to teach you this shit, hoping that they taught you the right way to do it. Bro, that's what made me lit about personal development. It's like, hold on, you mean to tell me I can accelerate my learning curve? Like yeah. Sam Watson created Walmart and Sam's Club, which is worth billions of dollars, which when he died, like three children that he had was each given like 33 billion, 33 billion, 30 billion. <laughs> and he wrote a book and I can read that book and get his lifetime worth of experience in an hour or two Man. if I just focus that's how I go but you gotta think about it like like I said in the past our ancestors wasn't even able to read they wasn't taught to read it was illegal so then you think about like we know how to read why. we know how to get on a computer and search we know how to do all of this so like it's really just it's our time to really just pass all this knowledge not just down but back to wow yeah as you got to think, our parents still need the knowledge to be able to progress. They still here. Wow. In the new world that they didn't come up in, <laughs> yeah, they don't that's been changing nobody. and developing against their will, <laughs> whether they're uh, consciously or unconsciously aware of it. For sure. So, you did It's On The Flow. Yep. You did It's On The Flow Deluxe. It's On The Flow 2 coming out. Yep. That's going to be November 23rd, right? Yep, on the 23rd of November. What's the difference between It's On The Floor 1 and two on the on the first one it's like i was recording i could i could feel the difference of myself like oh i'm a little bit i could feel a little bit more comfortable in the studio i stopped writing so much and mm-hmm. just started going off my vibes mm-hmm. this one is straight vibes it ain't no oh i tried to write a little bit here and there like no nah, this is straight vibes this is more like i'm comfortable like i'm really just popping my shit like yeah i know i know i got this shit type of vibe yeah. Like on every song you're gonna be able to tell like I'm popping my shit and it's, it's more so like even on songs that's like more pain in it you can still tell that it's natural it's not like nothing is forced so what's that creation process like for you for you to make different kind of music that cause bro I listen to your stuff 
You got some music that make me want to cry. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some music that make me want to grind. Mm -hmm. Some music that make me want to dance. You feel me? Keep me motivated. Right. So, with that being said, how, what's your creation process when you want to make a project or a song? You know, you have so many different ideas. How do you execute that and get that out? Well, like my my process might be different from other people for like the simple fact. I want to know people like we could be sitting here right now and I'd be like, damn, this should be hard. I whip out my laptop wherever I'm at, plug up my mic, and be like, "Say that one more time, cause it's very significant." Yeah, like wherever, wherever I'm at, I'll pull out my laptop, put up my mic, like, bro, just give me a second, like, let, let's work real quick. And more people find it more catching that, like, or cool that I'm able to just do that right there, no matter where I'm at. But like, for me, like I said, it's therapeutic. Like, motherfucker, like I might come over and kick it with y'all. Y'all don't know what I'm going through at the crib. You know what I'm saying? But for me to like sit there and like whip up a song, right there, it's like when Kobe was on the court. Like I'm mm -hmm. sure he ain't thinking about what he got going on at the crib. Like that's my moment to just kind of zone out and not think about nothing. So you strike when the moment is hot. Yeah, and but that that's just beginning of my process. I'll take that because like I, the way I record it, I be want to take it to a regular studio and like so I can get the full quality of the song how I want it to sound. That's just like my rough draft. That's just like somebody write a paragraph on the paper. But then they type it up later. Bro, I bet that make your turnover ratio way better so you're not wasting your time yeah, in the no, studio, no, no. huh? I learned that the hard way. Like, it's not, it's more about coming prepared. Like, I know back in the day, they probably used to be writing raps and then trying to rehearse the raps at the home in the mirror. Like, no, I'll, I'll be sitting in the booth with my phone. Like, hold on, bro, just hold. I'm listening to the song that I already recorded. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Now I'm able to just spit it out just like I heard it in my head. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, like, that's my process. That's dope, bro. And I yeah. see it's definitely been helping. Yeah. And then, like I said, when I get in there, I I, I tweak it mm -hmm. as I'm going, like when I record it at the studio. But, like, I don't, that mean I done already drove here listening to this music, or I done mm -hmm. drove around listening to this music. I done came up with more stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just basically just like a brainstorming um, pattern for me, for real. Bro, that's dope. So, what would you say? What where would you say you see yourself, buddy? It's on the flow series. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Yeah, five years from now, like I see myself being a big artist, mm -hmm. like, and hopefully, I ain't gonna say hopefully because I manifest. I can see you being that too. Bro. It's, it's, it's gonna be like a big artist that turns this into like a real company. Like, mm -hmm. I know it might sound funny to people, but like I want to be a company. And when I say that, like, you look at like Kevin Hart, he's a company. That's that's not just Kevin Hart. It's take like eight people to make Kevin Hart. Like, yeah. when he walk into a building, this was scheduled for him to be there. Somebody's there with his clothes. Somebody's there. Like, you know what I'm saying? This ain't, it's never a dull moment with Kevin Hart. He's always working. Like, and that's where I see myself five years from now. I'm trying to have my hands in so much stuff. I can't just do it by myself. So is it just musical aspects you want to do? What else do you want to nah, do as like, far I as your brand and like, business? I want to get into like fashion. I want to get into like property owning. I definitely want to get into like the community and figure out like how I can help more so not with just any kids because I feel like that that's where people come out and say like I want to give out book bags I want to give out bikes no I want to help kids that like come from environments where they not made for them to like succeed and when I say that like kids nobody think about the kids that's brought up in the domestic violence homes nobody really think about the kids that's brought up with like their parents is already perished you know what I'm saying like that type of thing yeah or like the kids that come out of juvenile like what what's what's given to them like what's the, where's the reforming that for them like it's no exactly. other options we don't know so like eventually i want to get into like that type of stuff oh that's a big deal so you want to be able to um continue to be influential so you can help other people with your influence yeah i'm just trying to build up my platform to bring in as many people as i can mm -hmm. and then when we get when i get that many people around i want them to be feeling comfortable enough to listen to what i'm about to say and when i say it like let's move in that direction Mm -hmm. Like, so if I get everybody around and I find out, like, this person right here knows about real estate, this this person right here work with politics, mm -hmm. my influence, hopefully, will be like, all right, well, look, let's turn this building into something for these kids. Let's use this to help with this person campaign. And that's how you can just keep influencing things. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, that's my, that's the bigger plan. <laughs> wow. All right. So what would you say, like, um, is the biggest message that you want to get across for the people that's listening right now, you know, like this, your your name is, you know, buddy, be you don't doubt you. So right. what, what mark do you want to leave on this world or how can you help people? 
And the mark that I want to leave, like, to really get my message across is, like, to never really give up. And, like, for, I mean, for lack of better terms, it's like the Nipsey Hustle thing. The marathon continues. Like, no matter what happens, you always can bounce back because it's always going to keep going until you give up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, again, no matter what nobody think about you, no matter if you doubt yourself, whatever, like, whatever the moment is, it's that moment. Just know that that moment is temporary. It's something else to come. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the real message I want to leave behind. Just trying to inspire people to just keep going for what you want. Right. Yeah. Wow. And you said just like Nipsey, just like the just marathon. Like, bro, I got it tatted on me. Wow. TMC. That's dope, man. Yeah. That That's true, bro, because it's like you never really... You never really lose or you never really fail unless you say so, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, I was talking with someone and they said, like, even in relationships, the relationship not over unless somebody literally give gives up. Yeah. Other than that, as long as you don't give up, you're always in the game. Yeah, it's always, I feel like it always can be mended. Like, even in regular life situations, like, it might be somebody that's locked up right now. So when you mean to tell me when they get out, life is over? Right. Like, no, it's something else for you to do when you get out, bro. It's just a matter of you not giving up on yourself. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, trust me, it's going to be people that still see you as that person that was locked up. But as long as you keep in your mind, like, bro, that was me then. This is me now. And it's, you got a plan or plotting on who you want to be. And the marathon continues. Like, it's always something to work towards. Bro, that makes me think about, like, um, something that you were saying, like, earlier. Because I feel like what you're doing... You, you have the mindset of not only doing it for yourself, but being a positive influence to other people. What made you like that? Because a lot of people aren't. Bro, I was raised by pastors. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think that played a big role in it. Like, one of my main mentors was a pastor. Mm -hmm. Like, his name was uh, Ed Edward Thomas. We called him Pastor Thomas. Mm -hmm. This man, like, I never seen him even really sleep because he was so much worried about the people that he was, like, shepherding. And the reason why I say that, I just stayed summers at this man's house. And I, I can't remember him sleeping. I mean, he passed away now, so eventually mm -hmm. I seen him close his eyes. R.P. him, yeah. yeah. but, like, I've seen him work day and night. And it was, none of it was really for him. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I seen him literally be a shepherd over people's lives. And, like, that made me, like, think. And he taught me stuff, like, we were put here for a purpose. And everything is that was going on is, is bigger than just you. So, like, don't think. Because people doubt you, they treat you a certain way, they look at you a certain way, You think they think you a stereotype. That has nothing to do with the little boy that's watching you, though. Mm -hmm. He don't know nothing about none of that. So somebody's always watching you, so your purpose could be for you to go through all that so you can teach the little boy that's been watching you what to do so he don't have to go through that. Or if he do encounter it, he know what to do now. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, like, that, that's probably one of the major people in my life that taught me that. And then my granddad, like, Mind you, I just told you, like, I, I lost my granddad, like, a month ago. For my real. condolences, bro. I appreciate that. But, like, my, my granddad was, like, the same type of person. Like, what was one of the biggest things that he that he taught you man, from he had this watching motto, him? He had this motto, like, stand up and be a man. Like, like I right? like that. It sounds like an old man motto, and you'd be like, bro, what the hell does that even mean? But in his mind, like, being a man was providing for your family. Like, no matter what it took, no matter, like, if you was exhausted, like, bro, if you know you had something to do for your family, you need to do it. And I also meant, like, you handle business first. Mm -hmm. Like, you can play around later on. He always would tell me, like, you can play around later on. I'll handle my business first. Like, I make mm -hmm. sure all my bills paid, and then I go grab my beers or whatever. Right. But, like, that's one of the main things he taught me. And, like I said, he was more of a person that he didn't really know how to say stuff because he was an older guy. My granddad died. He's 85 years old. Mm -hmm. He was an older guy, wow. so he didn't really know how oh, to, like, dude, put it in yeah. words. But he more so led by example. Mm -hmm. So, like in the midst of everything that was going on with him. Because like I said, we found out he had cancer. I really don't know how long my granddad knew he had cancer. Mm -hmm. But even wow. with him having cancer, it still was about everybody else. Like, he still made sure we all had. You so, know what I'm and then that, I think that goes back to you when you're going through hard times, you continue to push forward, you continue yeah. to do things. And you've seen that yeah. example. Right. And now I see you being that example. Yeah, I'm trying to be for sure. No, oh, no, you're doing it, bro. For sure. I see <laughs> Good it. Looking. I see it. Especially, uh, you said you had, what, three children as yeah, well. That's, three kids, yep. They continue to keep you motivated and pushing, huh? Yeah, man. You can't really give up with the kids involved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't. That's dope, bro. Yeah. Shout out to them as well, yeah. man. I got for you. real, for real. Yeah. Wow, bro. So you got something going, man. I appreciate that. Dope projects. It's on I the flow. That. Two coming out November 23rd. Yeah, I'm glad you Everybody got to hear it. I'm glad you got to hear it early. I know you... 
You was bro, telling you got me. some slappers on there, bro. <laughs> hey, y'all need to tune in for real, bro. I got some slappers on there, bro. Man, for real. Go the way crazy. you just pay attention to detail, like the way that you really want things, the way that you visualize and just really break it down to reality. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I just I just feel like a lot of artists are just sticking to like what we see. Mm-hmm. And like and it also get comes to a place where like we're independent artists. So like we don't have that backing that everybody else has. Mm-hmm. You can look at that one or two ways. You can look at that like I'm gonna do the bare minimum because I don't have this backing. Or you can look at it like, bro, I gotta get creative as hell because I don't have the shit that these other artists have. Yeah. So like I'm gonna make sure my music sounds good. I'm gonna try to make sure that my visuals look on point. You ain't even gonna be able to tell like which one is the sound artist, which one is isn't. Exactly. So like that's just where my mind at man I'm just really ready for everybody to get the project and like really get to like sit with it but I really want people to listen though Mm -hmm. like just don't think like oh this motherfucker turned up like no listen to the wordplay listen to what I'm saying like exactly I'm still giving you me like all the way down to like lyrics you'll be able to point out like damn bro you said said something cold and woozy bro I was listening to (laughs) woozy bro you said uh my my niggas fell out it was me it was my, toxic over yeah. a girl that gave on neck than Ostrich or something. Yeah, my homies had love for each other that turned toxic over a girl that gave more neck than an ostrich. Like it was a cold play on words, but it's really just about my friends falling out over a female. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I ain't with that. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Gotta be hey, bros. <laughs> it's supposed to be, but hey, I don't like I said, either way, like I don't even Look at it like that. Like I look at it like if you my bro, you wouldn't have crossed me over that female. Exactly. And it's I also like it's look like at the it moral... like if you my bro, you shouldn't get mad if this the type of female that this is. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But plus the understanding of of everything and yeah, you, you know what is love is love. You don't to. do that. You know, like yeah. you're really not supposed to yeah, mess you, with the same one. Exactly. You supposed yeah. to have you supposed to have boundaries for your people. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like that that's the type of gems I be trying to like put in the songs, but still like in a funny catchy way yeah but you did it though (laughs) good looking now as far as like the music and the people yeah where can the people find your music and where can the people find you hey they can find me on instagram uh right now i'm working on a website so Mm -hmm. my website will be up probably the day that the tape launch Mm -hmm. what's your instagram name um that's buddy and that's gonna be the name of the uh website but you know i'm country so we spell it (laughs) d-a-t-s underscore buddy for sure and the website probably gonna be the same thing it'll be out like i said on the 23rd you better go in there and get merch You'll be able to find the music on there, Ooh. but the, the music gonna be on every platform. Mm-hmm. Apple Music, Spotify, where, whatever you listen to for real, it's gonna be on there. Bet, bro. Yeah. Hey, man, great conversation. It was great tapping in with you, for getting sure. to know more about yourself, your musical background. Man, you got some stuff going. Bro, it's I on the flow for it, sure. Man. I appreciate it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm.